Some footage in this video is from players around the community. Their links will be in the description of this video as well as the music too. This video I know a lot of you have been waiting for. The weapon that quite literally broke the internet. The weapon that was a part of Taco Bell ads, a part of every single player's loadout if you were lucky enough to get it, and the weapon that caused the reactions like no other. So let's talk about why this weapon garnered this much love, why this weapon was the gold standard of exotics, and why this weapon still has everyone talking to this day. Strap yourself in, maybe hit like and subscribe, and brace yourself for this Nordic powerhouse of a weapon, the Yellow Horn. While there isn't really a lot of context to this one, this weapon is kind of ground zero, but I'll try my best. The Yallerhorn was forged from the armor of titans in the Battle of the Twilight Gap by Felix Crux, and it was a weapon that definitely paid homage to the Warhorn in Norse mythology that was used to mark the start of Ragnarok. This weapon has some serious oomph to it already, but it goes even further too. Put yourself in the footsteps of the developers at the start of Destiny. You were creating ideas for your weapon type, Exotics, on a pretty new and risky concept of a first person shooter RPG kind of MMO crossbreed. This is something that really hadn't been done before to my knowledge and Bungie being Bungie had a lot to deliver, especially in the weapon department to compete with other games before it like Borderlands and its crazy and unique weapons. You would need to come up with something very powerful to keep the player base at large excited to chase it, but little did we honestly know how powerful this weapon would be. Day 1 of Destiny released September 9th, 2014 to millions of players, and the first thing to note here is that the game was just so different than it is now. Difficulty spikes were wild, running and hiding from strike bosses was a common thing, there were no healing rifts, barricades, anything of that sort. I mean hell, if you even wanted to glide or double jump, you had to level up your subclass at that point. Here's a good example of how difficult things were, and this is us with a pretty good setup for these areas too. No! <laughs> I'm going in for the plays, I'm going in for the plays. I hit him. He's hurting. Let's go! We got Essence of the Feast! They have a bubble. I know. I know Are I you f***ing my dad? Oh, he's almost dead, he's almost dead. Shoot, 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 He's dead, he's dead, he's dead. One is dead, one is dead. We got one more, we got one more in the back. I got one more. I got heavy. We got another one. We're good, I got another one. We have another one, dude. We were so unaware compared to now. So many of us had played the beta and thought about Glimmer being the most important currency. That's how different things were. If you were lucky enough to get a legendary engram, it may have even turned into a blue. And if it didn't, guess what? You had to upgrade that weapon too with the resources that you couldn't buy from a vendor and grinding that weapon to get the perks upgraded. Exotics were truly exotic too. Not to say they aren't now, because they're still all unique and serve purposes in their own right. I just mean exotic in the sense of how rare it was to see somebody with one. The feeling wasn't, why don't you have this exotic, idiot? It was, oh, you have that exotic. Then players would check your loadout in awe of a new discovery. There was no collections page. No way to really track how many exotics were out there. Just word of mouth and discovery keeping that wonder of what there was alive and well. So, let's circle back to Gallahorn, a random but extremely rare exotic, heavy ammo rocket launcher. It held seven shots total, and players were not jumping in the air at first. What? How could they, how could they not jump in the air? It, it, it's Gallahorn. I mean, come on. Well, it comes back to that lack of awareness and thinking of the game differently. Most of us saw something like Suros Regime 
or Hawkmoon, or Red Death being the best pick since you were always going to need your primary, without thinking of the power of the exotic heavy for bosses and stronger enemies. Plus, remember that grind to upgrade your weapons? Yeah, heavies were going to need a hot minute to upgrade since Motes of Light were not yet able to upgrade your weapons, so that meant shooting lots of rockets to get one step further on the Yellowhorn's upgrade process. Who is Zer? Well, aside from the lore, Zer is every Destiny player's best friend, and Zer was a complete mystery. No advertising, no word about him, just a mysterious and odd looking vendor who sells exotics? What? He sells exotics! How much glimmer was he gonna need from me? Come on, I got the checkbook ready for the glimmer. None, actually. Zer would require players to exchange a currency as strange as him a strange coin, lots of them for a weapon, and these coins were at a premium. Think about it like this, a week's worth of grinding may give you anywhere between 10 to 20 strange coins, so that meant decision making when it came to Zer. Were you going to buy an armor exotics for your class for 13 strange coins, or are you going to save up 21 strange coins for that red death, an exotic that would heal you on critical kills and had tons of ammo? would slay lots of enemies inside Strikes and Crucible, too. Yeah, yeah you were. Yeah, baby, yeah you were. So on week one, most players who had saved up the coins bought this weapon. Have fun in Crucible, everyone. Week two rolls around and players are loving their red death, feeling well invested on the strange coins and trying to save up enough to buy another primary weapon from Xur on Friday. September 19th, 2014. Zer was selling a Helm of Inmost Light for Titans, Sun Bracers for Warlocks, Lucky Raspberry for Hunters, and along with all of this, there was this heavy ammo rocket launcher that cost 17 strange coins. Why would I ever want to buy a rocket launcher when my primary is what I'm always going to use? So yeah, myself and lots of other people in the community skipped out on buying that stupid rocket launcher what was it gonna do anyway just like blow people up or something come on we just uh yeah we skipped out on the weapon that would come to break the internet the gallowhorn in Zer's inventory for an easy find in a whole year of destruction was skipped out on by almost everyone. I don't even have time to explain why I don't have time to explain this hiccup by everyone in the community. Zer wouldn't sell it again for a very, very long time, which we will touch on later, but for those who weren't lucky enough to obtain it, this rocket launcher would go on to conquer a whole year of content. Destiny at launch had this wonder to it, with all these exotics and no way to track them like we previously stated. But it also had a Master Rahul and a loot cave. Holy crap, the treasure cave is OP. So here's the thing about the drops in Destiny, and I can really feel this strongly because I've been going back and playing it again recently. Exotics in Destiny 1 do not drop often at all and take into account that the three of coin booster for exotic drop chance was also not there in year one. So players had to find a way to get engrams to drop pretty often from activities. One day, players who were exploring the Cosmodrome stumbled across a cave in the Skywatch area. I'm sure this started out as something simple, you know, like a kill hive enemies bounty, but quickly grew in sheer glory as enemies just kept on spawning spawning and dropping precious engrams for all to enjoy. Especially that person who went AFK while everyone else did the work. Yeah, shout out to them. So the treasure cave, what do we do? Anything special? Well, you stand here in this exact spot, you shoot at that cave, and you collect your sweet, sweet rewards. It is pretty straightforward. This little cave would fill to the brim with rare engrams, common engrams, and a chance for legendary engrams. Trust me, a video about the infamous loot cave will be made one day. But for now, this cave gave us all hope in getting an exotic. What would my legendary engram turn into? Could it be a new scout rifle? A hand cannon? An auto rifle to slay in PvP? Or an exotic? 
Oh, I can't wa Oh, you are god. God damn it. Master Rahul became a meme for this reason alone. Your legendary drops turning blue. Your blues become legendary, and your chances of getting an exotic diminishing right in front of you. So why even tell you these stories? Well, it will put the reaction clips I'm about to show you into perspective. So much. Oh my god! Yeah, my god! Yes! Yeah! Oh my god! Wow! I got it! Yes! Oh my god, it's done! Oh, a thousand hours! Oh my god, I got it! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! I got fucking Galahorn! I got the Galahorn! Oh my god, I got fucking Galahorn! Oh my god, look at my heavy weapon oh, now! He oh my god, I got the fucking Galahorn! I got fucking Galahorn! Oh my god! Oh my fucking god! Oh my god, I got Galahorn! Oh my god! 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 No way! I can't get a horn! I got the Galahorn! I'm shouting out the window, I'm shouting out the I window! I fucking got Lil, the Galahorn! Oh right. oh what did you get? I got a Galahorn! I can get a Galahorn! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! The Galahorn really did have that impact for those reasons. I lend a question to you. How, or if you did get the Galahorn, what was your reaction and what activity did it drop from? Mine was from a nightfall in April and I ran around my house naked after. I'm, I'm actually not joking. Wow, I don't know why I told you guys that. I think we all can come together on these Galahorn drop stories, to be honest. It's no joke when people talk about the power of the Galahorn. We gotta try it. We gotta at least try. Hold on, let me put it in here. Hold on, hold on. So we can all get it right here. Alright, we gotta be quick. Are we ready? Let's go. Ready? Hey, I just fucking shoot them. Oh. Yo! Yo, we can kill her! We can kill her! Oh, kill her! Kill! She's dead! Yo! She's dead! Is she dead? We killed her! Is the strike over? Is she dead? No. No, she dropped something. She dropped something. Where is it? Alright, boom. Go boom. Oh, come on, shit. come on, come on, she's almost dead. She's on top of you guys. She's dead. Dead. She's dead? Yeah. Shit, what is that? Three seconds? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll what the f was that? Three seconds? Got I got three. Oh, Yo! We can say now that there's exotics that stand tall over it, but I don't know if that's entirely true, because in Destiny 2 right now, we have a lot of bosses that have less health, buffs and debuffs that work in tandem to wreck bosses, new bugs with Armor 2.0 wrecking bosses in world record times. Everybody swap. Under the middle, dodge the net. And go. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Let's go, dude! 
classic. Yes. Back then, you had bullet sponges. Maybe a weapons of light bubble. No mods on armor to buff your abilities for the most part. When I show you how fast bosses get roasted, you have to believe me that this was new. It was unreal. Let's talk about one boss that was nearly impossible to beat without Gallahorn. You face the trial of Skola. Week 1 of Prison of Elders, Skolas was Arcburn, and that meant you and your fire team were getting to the boss and immediately losing against him. Like, almost no chance when you had to dismantle mines, yes, or die. In such little time while trying to kill this guy, when almost everything in the room was shooting arc at you. Nope, it, it just it just wasn't happening. Uh. No, oh I did god. not! <laughs> oh my god! But Solar Week? Oh, oh boy. Just, uh, just look at Solar Week. If it was Solar Burn, Gallowhorn was strapped and ready to go. If it wasn't Solar Burn, Gallowhorn was strapped and ready to go. That's the thing. This weapon just really never stopped. And add in this consumable from Banshee 44 called Heavy Ammo Synthesis, which would refill your heavy completely if you were out of it, and it made wrecking these bosses that were once bullet sponges so much easier. Omnigol was really the first boss farm that you could do since you could kill her before the boss arena, and she would drop loot, and you could keep dying and doing it again. This weapon was so glorious, Bungie included it in their year one recap of Destiny in its own section. T Rex got a yaller horn! <laughs> Listen, he's playing with the cat out, out in the hall. He's not coming back. That's why. <laughs> I built Destiny's Gallarhorn entirely from Lego bricks. Look at it. It looks beautiful. This weapon put the game at a normal difficulty for a lot of players and was the power fantasy most endgame players wanted. Here's the other thing. With great power, though, comes great responsibility, right? Well, Gallarhorn did do one negative thing. Aside from being the only weapon people used in the heavy if you had it drop, you also were left out of activities if you didn't have it drop. Think of Destiny LFG, or looking for guardian sites, like the Wild West back then. Nobody was used to this type of game that would require online looter cooperation on console, and would need up to six players for some activities. So gatekeeping was very, very real, unfortunately. Must have 365 Gallahorn was commonplace for a lot of posts, and this kind of gave LFG a bad reputation for a lot of players. Even if it's a lot better now than before, there was nothing like seeing some of these posts. My favorite being one that asked for a good credit score and a good 401k to raid. Hey, at least they were looking out for me. Gallahorn was the best and worst kind of power, and finding the balance was tough. Especially if you weren't lucky enough to get your hands on one. But there was one day where Lord Zur would come through. I'm going to make this a shorter one, but I want to talk about the day that the Gallahorn broke the internet. The day was August 14th, 2015 and our tentacle face, beautiful cloaked vendor came in hot and spicy with the drops. He sold Gallahorn again. This was the first time since week two of the game's release. And Zer sold Gallahorn. Hey, what's going on guys? Nah, wait, you can go get mom to get the camera. The fucking Gallahorn's here guys. He's selling it finally after almost a whole year. We are seeing it again in his inventory. Exciting days here. He sold it in week two, but back then, some people, not gonna mention any names, this guy, told people to not buy it. A lot of people didn't have the currency for it, the coins for it anyways, but I was just like, hey, it's a rocket launcher. Who the hell's gonna need rocket launchers? They all go boom, right? 
rock. Hello again, my friends. That elusive bastard, you, is back in the tower. So let's see what he's got in stock. Well, looky here. For only the second time in this miserable bastard's existence, Zhu is selling Yalahorn. Yalahorn, it's a no-brainer. Buy it, buy it now. Buy it before it gets nerfed so you can feel the full power of Destiny's most coveted rocket launcher. Now, I have four of the f***ing things and I'm still gonna buy it. Why? Because f***ing Yalahorn. Look, you knew this was coming. Gallahorn was announced to be nerfed July 17, 2015. So, on my birthday, of course. Cool. And to nobody's surprise, this happened with the explanation being honestly justified, stating if Destiny had a nuke, it would be the Ballerhorn. We definitely intended to have a high damage heavy weapon that was ideal for PvE destruction. What we did not intend and what we unfortunately saw was pick up raid and nightfall groups gating participation based on whether or not players had this weapon. Gallivorn was so strong that for many people it has become the only answer to getting through tough encounters and therefore they were less willing to spend time with other players that didn't have it. We strive for Destiny to be a place where a single weapon or strategy does not dictate how or with whom you spend your time. In the new world, Gallahorn is still worthy of his legacy of an exotic heavy weapon, but we hope it promotes inclusive behavior rather than exclusivity. This chart will show you just how much it was used by players, and what was pretty cool about it was the way they went about the nerf giving you plenty of clear reasoning and giving the player base time to enjoy it, also by giving it to Zur that weekend in August. The Gallahorn wouldn't be able to be infused during the Taken King either. So players had to stick to year one activities to use their nerf baller horn, or just not use it at all. Year three of Destiny, Rise of Iron comes in like this. Gallowhorn is back, baby! An awesome quest after you have finished the campaign of Rise of Iron and collected five SIVA nanites. Hopefully you made it to the top of the summit to grab one of them. Okay, I got I got knocked so far down and I was at a really high point. <laughs> I just <laughs> You were given a quest to locate the Wolfhead statues. Then you were to jump into PvP map Bannerfall and defend it with the turrets that were in this really tough mission. The mission also gave us insight into the creator of the Gallowhorn, Mr. Felix Crux, and which to be honest was a good way to tie the weapon's legacy together and give players more appreciation for the lore behind the weapon. To cap this quest off, Bungie put players in Crux's workshop while our ghost scanned the blueprints and formed the weapon. After this was scanned, you got the Gallowhorn back and took down everything in the mission. Heavy ammo crates galore and sweet victory was had. Gallowhorn was nerfed, but that didn't stop it from being one of the best exotics by the end of Destiny. That's how powerful this weapon really was. Not even a nerf could stop it. I was so pleased by how Bungie handled this weapon and its return, and I asked the question to you. What was your favorite moment with Gallahorn? It could be year one, or it could be Rise of Iron. Well, this is where we come together to talk about Gallahorn in today's game, and if it should or shouldn't return. Other than that one easter egg with the spider, Gallahorn is not back in Destiny 2. I spent a lot of time thinking about this while doing my playthrough of Destiny 1, but I want to start with the question for you. Should the Gallahorn return? Now, 
I will say my piece. And maybe to your surprise, I actually don't think that the Gallowhorn should come back. And here are my reasons why. Starting with the points I made in my Remakes and Remasters video, if the Gallowhorn were to return, what is something new that can be added? Not much, considering the perk was already great. Now, are rockets even in a great spot in Destiny 2? No. Rockets aren't the same powerhouse they were in Destiny 1, either. Finally, if Bungie were to bring this back, let's say in a secret mission form, you would use it, but you probably wouldn't use it for a very long time. Think about Bad Juju's return in the Season of Opulence. A cool mission, but a weapon that isn't the same as it was before due to the game's philosophy being very different. Gallowhorn is such a great weapon, and I want to remember it that way, but we always remember things we miss in the most positive of lights without considering the moment of the game that we are in. We have so many amazing exotics that are in the now, and more to come in the future. Personally, I want to see even more creativity be fleshed out and new exotic stories to tell one day. I will always love the Gallowhorn for the memories that it made and inspire me to keep having those memories in Destiny, but I want it to stay in Destiny 1 for the time being. And I also want to thank all of you for watching and supporting me on this video. If you did enjoy, a like would be greatly appreciated as well as a subscription. I will be streaming Destiny 2 and Destiny 1 a lot on Twitch as we push for partner, so the link to that channel will be at the top of the description. Anyways guys, enjoy the bloopers and I'll see you next time. Peace. Alright, well, thank you for watching. Uh, this has been Rookie Nine for Fluid. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more, hey, they... what, what, what? Yo, what the? Yo, what? What? Yo! Yo, I got a Gallowhorn! Yes! Yo! Yo! No fucking way! No way! No way! Plan. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Because that's what I'm gonna do. Oh my god, it happened! Hey guys, you want to know what we're doing today? <laughs> oh my god! No, my god! Oh my god! No, no way! No freaking way! No way! It's set! No way! No way! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> There's so many! <laughs> They're fucking everywhere. Is this guy dead yet? Oh my <laughs> fucking lord. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Get me out, dude! Oh my fucking god! <laughs> I feel like I'm fucking AC 130, dude. <laughs> He's got an army chasing him. He's got an army chasing him. I've never been fished harder in the no, Destiny universe, dude. Evan, shoot him with that sniper, bro. Shoot him. Shoot him. Shoot him. Got him. Holy oh. shit, run.